So hello, good afternoon everyone. My name is Victoria, I'm from Ukraine. This is Eleonora, she's my chaperone. And for me, it's a great pleasure, honor and responsibility to be here and represent the Ukrainian displaced children. So the main topic of our presentation is um, experiences and perceptions of displaced children in Ukraine and Ukrainian refugees abroad. But at the beginning, let's break the ice and do a fun quiz about Ukraine to deep your knowledge about my native country. So um, we have uh, questions with options and open questions. So first, um, what is the capital of Ukraine? Kharkiv, Lviv or Kyiv? Who votes for Kharkiv? Raise your hand. Who votes for Kyiv? Well done, and who votes for Lviv? Okay, you're right, it's, it's Kyiv, and there is a photo of our capital city. It's Maidan. Okay, next question. What are the colors of Ukrainian flag? We also have options, but I think you know. <laughs> so, who votes for blue and yellow? Well, yeah, you're right, well done. <laughs> But do you know what they represent, blue and yellow? Yeah, you're right, exactly. Well done. Uh, next question. It was uh, our um, blue sky and yellow wheat because Ukraine, one of the most, uh, one of the biggest ex ex exporters of wheat. Okay. Uh, it's open question. Do you know any Ukrainian dish or maybe you have tried something? Yeah? Ukrainian borscht, right? It's like a soup with a beetroot. Maybe something else? Um, in, Pola, in Poland it's pierogi, but in Ukraine it's voreniki. It's like a dumplings with the potato or cabbage or sometimes it's maybe cherry, like a dessert. Um, yeah, you're right, cool. <laughs> okay, also in Ukraine we have uh, our shirts, like national shirts, embraced shirts, we call it Vishivankas, it's a photo on the slide. And maybe you can answer what, like, we, you can see the elements embraced. Yeah, it's flowers, exactly. Um, usually it may be also other symbols of Ukraine, like uh, trident or um, birds or a uh, wheat, for example, also. And usually it's uh, red and black because it represents black is sadness and red is love, like sadness and love. And uh, the, five, the fifth question, my favorite, um, choose the correct shape of Ukraine. I'll let you think about <laughs> who votes for the first one, for the second one, yep, and the last one. Okay, but you're a little wrong because it's <laughs> the, the second one. <laughs> it's Ukraine, yeah, and you can see Crimea and uh, Dnipro, it's our river. Yeah, but you were close. Um, other, other ones is like the first one is Austria, the last one is Kazakhstan. Okay, and last question, it's open one. I want to ask you, do you know any famous Ukrainians, like maybe sportsmen or singers? No? Maybe you've heard about Andriy Shevchenko, it's a famous footballer. Probably you've heard about Alexander Ufik, Usik, it's boxer. Um, and uh, if you watched Eurovision, probably you know Jamala. She won Eurovision in 2016, I guess, yeah. Or maybe you remember Ruslana from 20, uh, 2004 year of Eurovision. Um, yeah, you're great, thank you so much, you're really clever. <laughs> Um, okay, and uh, now let's see the agenda of our session. 
let me remember you the main topic. It's listening to children's voices, uh, experiences and perceptions of displaced children in Ukraine and refugees abroad. So there is agenda. Firstly, I will introduce myself, who am I, how you can call me, where I am from. Uh, then I will share challenges and opportunities faced by displaced children in a new environment. And also I will talk about uh, world vision programming and how children were participation in those activities and uh, world vision partners, world vision implementing partners in Ukraine. Then we will have uh, questions and answers. And at the very end, we will have a secret activity that I want you to join. <laughs> keep the secret. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, let me introduce myself. As you know, I'm Victoria. I'm Ukrainian teenager. So my first language is Ukrainian. It isn't English. So I may do mistakes or mispronounce some words. Please keep it in mind because I try my best. And um, I'm 15 years old and I'm a child displaced twice. Um, my, my hometown is Donetsk. It's a pink house on the map. Um, in 2014, when Russia started a war against Ukraine, uh, Donetsk was occupied, and therefore my family and I were forced to run away from there. And we moved to Bakhmut. It's a greenhouse. But as you know, in 2022, Russia started a full-scale invasion, and Bakhmut was absolutely destroyed. And we were forced to move again. And we moved to Bila Tserkva, it's Kiev region, Orange House. And you know, Bila Tserkva, it's not just two random words or just random sounds. I want you to try to guess what does it mean in Ukrainian. You know? Yeah, exactly, it's white church. <laughs> You're so clever. <laughs> Thank you. And also maybe you can try to guess how long did it take for me and my family to get from Bakhmut? It's, uh, the greenhouse to be like a orange one. Many hours. Mm, it was 11 hour trip by car. But you know, now it seems not really long because for us it's take three days to get here. So it's like... <laughs> okay. Um, maybe you can try to guess like how many kilometers from Bakhmut to Bila Tserkva. <laughs> no, not that much, but you're you were close. It's 720 plus kilometers, but no, it's not that long. <laughs> um, okay, and when I went to Bila Tserkva, I was really depressed because I was displaced to the second time. It was like why again and i don't have a f i didn't have friends there but then my mom found out about world vision programming implemented by ukrainian national ngo girls and i went there and i liked it so much it helped me to integrate into new community and feel better what i liked it the most was probably ukraine therapy its activities where children were deep in their knowledges uh, about ukraine for example all this questions we've learned on these activities. Also equally important for me was English speaking club because it's helping me to improve my knowledges and come closer to my objective of becoming a diplomat in future. So it's cool. And um, now I'm a volunteer on the charity foundation Svidoma Ukraina, which means Cassius Ukraine uh, in Bila Tserkva. And now I'm helping with the planning and organizing events and holidays for other children and teenagers. And I want to note that I participated in the last year virtual uh, meeting for Alliance. And I shared my experience, just was sharing my story. And it was incredible. Um, participations supported me. So this activity was also contributing to my decision about future profession. And now being here with you and uh, hearing your answers, it's really a pleasure. And I'm really thankful that World Vision chose me and let me, letted me to speak about Ukrainian refugees and displaced children.
So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, firstly, I want to talk about challenges and opportunities faced by displaced children in a new environment. I will talk about sense of safety and security, um, about education, um, children, children's identity, also barriers in their integration into new community, children's coping mechanisms to deal with the stress and displacement, and about their emotional well-being as well. So, uh, primarily, children want to feel safe. Yeah, because, uh, you know, children hear um, air alarm, it's a siren, it's really stressful noise. And uh, children just want to be safe, like know that there is no air alarm and therefore no danger to their lives. And uh, it's, uh, children live in the permanent stress and fear because they, they can die like every day. And they also worry about their families, their family members, their friends, and just want to live in stability, just want to know what's going to be tomorrow. And there is a quote from my peer in Dnipro, Ukraine. Um, when do you feel safe? When everything is fine, when you are woke up and realize that you are alive. Yeah, it's really scary, but it's our present in Ukraine, unfortunately, because of the war. Um, also, for refugees abroad, it's really sensitive to hear news from Ukraine, because children worry about their relatives and friends stayed in Ukraine. Mm, children may feel safe in their new houses, but it's painful to know that their homeland is at war, or probably their friends or relatives in danger. Also, children like their new houses and cities and countries, but they dreaming about return home, their native town when they have grown up, grown up and have all their dear memories. But some, people, some children don't have their houses anymore because it's destroyed or occupied. As like, for example, Donetsk is occupied and Bakhmut is absolutely ruined and occupied so, uh, also. So, um, next, oh, yeah. uh, next challenge and opportunity is education. Usually children need to change their school when they first move uh, to our other town or other country. And there are many challenges because you know, you need to integrate into new community, make new friends and study. So, and refugees have like really Mm, big challenge it's language barrier because they need to know mm, they need to learn new language or probably when they move to the country that speaks English it's a bit easier because we study English in school but for children who move to neighborhood countries it's like for Moldova or Romania they don't know their language and they need to learn it and it's hard to learn it's it's hard to study in your own language imagine in studying in the foreign one which you still learning it's really hard and difficult it's hard to learn in english some in ukrainian something in english it's even harder um plus it's different uh curriculums like programs in school like in ukraine we can may study in the one way but abroad it may be absolutely other and unfamiliar methods for children and they need to manage it and it's so hard and different for them but it's good to know that usually children emphasizing that their new teachers helping them to integrate in the new community there is a quote from the female refugee in romania um, our school our teachers are very good they help and support us sometimes they translate when we don't understand and children here are very good. And I like this quote because it's like hope, hopeful for Ukrainians that they're supported abroad. But um, some displaced children in Ukraine choose to not change their school and continue to study online, as I do. I still can study in my Bakhmut school that is absolutely ruined and doesn't exist physically, but we're studying. And there is positive sites of online schooling. For example, 
children are still connected with their friends, uh, classmates and teachers. And also children may plan their time and study in their own speed, which is helpful for them. But it's many negative sides. For example, yes, children still connected with their friends and teachers, but it's hard to communicate through electronic devices. So for children who study online, there is no enough communication with their peers and teachers as well. But in some region, region, regions in Ukraine, it's unsafe to visit school in person. So online education is the only opportunity because online and offline education may be equally interrupted with the air alarm, attacks, disruptions with the electricity, online connection, or heating, which is really a big problem during our cold winters. And some people, some children abroad who were forced to move abroad due to war, uh, it's hard that they attend in local school, like in person, and then they come home and do Ukrainian homework. If you will ask why, I will answer, because if they want to return to Ukraine, when it's going to be safe, they should have Ukrainian education and Ukrainian degree. So, she, those, so they, they should or must even attend Ukrainian online education and have Ukrainian degree. And half of my classmates are abroad and they're exhausted because they need to do double homework in Ukraine school and the local school. They're just really tired, I want to sleep. And now I want to show you a video um, of Ukrainian refugees, uh, Ukrainian displaced children in uh, Cherkasy. And they will talk about the topics that we've covered, about sense of safety, security and education. So. Мене звати Тетюша, мене звати Сон. Ми переїхали з Харкова в Чорнуха. Ми коли їхали, в нас був в душі страх, тому що нам потрібно було йти в школу. І ми хвилювалися, ми знайдемо друзів нових, як будуть ставитися вчителі до нас, ну, оціну, оцінювати в нас, як буде. Ну, потім ми знайшли нових друзів і все. Ви подружилися і багато маєте друзів в школі, так? І вчителі. Навчилися готувати, малювати. Нам тут проводять майстер-класи. Ми ходили кататися на санках, розповідають на разні теми. І ми навчилися просити допомогу у Бога. От допомоги навчилися просити саме коли маєте якісь переживання, так? І скажіть, будь ласка, от коли ви почали відвідувати денний центр, чи змогли ви хоч трішки відволіктися від війни, забути, що йде? Я, коли кожен раз приходжу сюди, ми тут робимо все, і я навіть можу забути, що війна йде. Мені тут дуже добре. Так, що ви відчуваєте? You may share your experience, your experience um, or feelings about this video. What got your attention the most? Okay. <laughs> um, we will also have a, another video, so maybe we can compare it soon. Okay, next topic is sense of belonging. Because for children who moved abroad due to war, it really matters to keep their belonging to Ukraine and don't lose their Ukrainian identity. Because they would want to express themselves as Ukrainians, want to speak Ukrainian, want to practice Ukrainian culture. But in foreign countries, they need to adapt and speak in the local language and accept local culture. And therefore, children emphasize the importance of staying connected with their Ukrainian friends and being with their family as well. Because with them, they may speak Ukrainian and be themselves as well. Um, also, it's uh, really painful for refugees to be apart from their family, family members, because most of refugees have only their moms with them, and they really miss their dads, 
grandparents, other relatives, etc. It's really painful. They, it's hard to belong to somewhere when all your connections, friends and family are somewhere else. Mm. Also, for Ukrainians, it's really disappointing when we are confused with Russians. Yeah, our language are like really close, they have a common root, but it's not the same. And there is a quote from my peer in Georgia. Probably people who always confuse Ukrainians with Russians. I don't know, it hurts somehow. Yes, and they also say that we don't care at all. Ukrainians are Russians. It's the same thing, according to them, but we're not the same. We have, as I've already mentioned, we have similar languages, but we're not the same. And for children, it's really painful. I have a friend from Bila Cerkva, and she moved to Slovenia for a while at the beginning of the full-scale invasion and went there to school. And their teachers put her to Russian language lessons and didn't care about her feelings. And she was really disappointed because, yes, she understand, she may respond, but she felt like her first Ukrainian identity wasn't respond, uh, respected and supported. And even now when she's in Ukraine, she also remember those days like unpleasure experience. And I want to mention the really painful thoughts that Ukrainian children have that they want to return home, they want to belong to their, na their native cities, but they don't have them anymore. They're occupied or ruined and destroyed. And it's really painful for them. So I want you to know it and keep in mind. For children who moved abroad or even inside Ukraine, there are barriers in their integration. As I already mentioned, for refugees, the most important challenge is language. Because it's hard to find new friends when you don't speak their language and they don't speak yours. So it's hard. Also, every country has their own culture, habits and traditions. And children need to manage it because it may be different from Ukrainian ones. It may be different religion, different tradition, different habits, so on. But I need to mention that there are differences in culture even inside Ukraine. For example, most of Ukrainians are Christians, but not all. I have a friend, she is also an internally displaced child, and she is Crimean Tatar. Crimean Tatars is a minority within Ukraine. It's an indigenous people of Crimea, and uh, they have their own culture and language. They also share Ukrainian culture, Ukrainian language and identity as well. So, Crimean Tatars are Muslims. They have their own beliefs and rules uh, toward um, food and behaviors and lifestyle. So, my friend used to live in the location where half of the locals are Muslims. So, they are accepted, they have their environment, they may practice their religion. But now she lives in Bila Cerkva, in a Christian community, and she needs to face all this lack of her environment or ignorance toward her culture and different habits and inability to express herself as a Muslim. Also, children abroad may face, or even Ukraine, may face hostile behavior from the locals. And for children it's really disappointing because they want to be supported and may want to feel that they're needed here, they are respected and accepted. But sometimes some Ukrainians have that thoughts that, oh, they like behave bad to us. What it, it, is it was like our best choice to move to another location? Probably we need to, to stay at home while we came here, but they home may be under attacks or without data and connection, and they're like, okay, we need to move back because we don't have like uh, friends and uh, good people here. But majority of displaced child, children and refugees emphasizing that locals are good to them, they support them, and there is a clue, a 
quote from the 13-year-old female refugee in Romania. And she says, I think it's normal when there are people who don't support us. It's their opinion. But in general, most of the Romanians are very kind to us. They always ask us how to help. They always invite us somewhere. And I'm glad that there is such a bright people in Romania. And the last but not least barrier in integration, it's double schooling. Because instead of going out, making new friends, children should stay at home, inside their houses, and do their double homework. They don't practice sports, don't do active games or just socializing. They need to stay inside their homes. Um, also, I want to share with you positive and negative coping mechanisms that children have to manage their stun and uh, their experience of displacement. Yeah, there is a positive ones. For example, children practice their hobbies and activities that they enjoy. They may spend time with their friends or families. They listening to music, reading books, watching films, crafting something, etc. Also need to manage mention that all younger children adapt to the new environment more easily because teenagers have another level of communication and for them it's harder to find new friends and new, new community. But teenagers understand that they need their personal space and time to reflect their emotions and accept, and accept a new experience. For example, other my friend used to go for a walk alone when he just came to Bila Tserkva because, she, because he needed to understand his emotions he decided to do it in that way. But unfortunately, there are negative coping mechanisms. Children may not attend the special places or safe places for them because they, don't just, they just don't have an uh, ability. For example, special facilities may be not presented or in a really high cost, so children's parents can't pay for them. But sometimes everything needed may be presented, like special places are and really low cost or even free, but children isn't motivated to go there. Why? Because they don't have friends there. They need to socialize again and again. And some people, some children may be really shy and anxious. Their habit is to, com is to communicate through social media and electronic devices. Therefore, they don't attend such activities. Also, children were affected by war situation and they have, an, they have a fear that we, they, they can't plan for really long terms. They can't plan so far, really big moments. They need to be right here and right now because they don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or week or next month. There is a quote from Amor P, my, my peer in Tbilisi, Georgia, and he's saying, I'm used to not to plan for the distant future, because after the worst situation started, you cannot plan something else. And we left at once all to hear Georgia. Everything was ruined for me, and it was really upsetting. Now I don't plan such big moments, you have to be right now. I don't think about tomorrow because it's going to be hard for you later. And now I also want to show you a video and maybe you can compare it with the previous one because this one is uh, from the refugee in Moldova. The previous one was uh, about displaced children in Ukraine. And maybe you can compare it and find similars or something different. Привет, как тебя зовут? Привет, меня зовут Даша. А сколько тебе лет? Мне 11 лет. А можешь рассказать, с какого города ты приехала? Я приехала в Кишинев с Одессы. А сколько времени ты находишься в Кишиневе? Два года. Ого, это долгий срок. Да. Как часто ты посещаешь наш центр? Довольно часто. Да. 
А, что тебе больше всего здесь нравится? Что именно ты чувствуешь, когда находишься здесь? Ну, чувствую я себя очень комфортно. Мне очень нравятся педагоги, также прогулки и игры. Угу, спасибо. А какую помощь ты здесь получала? Гуманитарную. Например, химия, еда. Угу. А, можешь ли ты поделиться своими мыслями? О том, какую помощь ты здесь получила, не только про гуманитарную. Например, когда я сюда пришла, я была замкнутая в себе, но из-за общения с детьми здесь я более освоилась в Молдове, и ну, такое общение стало хорошее у меня. Хорошо, спасибо. А ты будешь дальше посещать наш центр? Конечно. Все, спасибо большое. So, what can you observe? Maybe you have thoughts or feelings about that? What is the familiar things or differences? Any volunteers? <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, for someone who didn't hear, he said that um, both in both videos, children were talking about safe sp spaces and how they helped them to feel better, that there is um, similar things in that area. Um, okay, next topic, it's emotional well-being and accessions, uh, access to children to have a psychological support. Um, as I already mentioned, children were really affected by war and therefore they have really different triggers. For example, the most common trigger is loud and sudden noises. It's happened because children frequently hear sounds of weapons, military aircrafts, missiles, drones, etc. Also, I want to give you an example of my 10-year-old sister. She is afraid of going asleep at night because most of the attacks happen happens on night time. Therefore, she associates darkness with danger. There is many triggers, for example, other my friend triggered by trains because she traveled for her, from her native city to the Bila Cerkva on train. Therefore, she associates it like with the displacement. Um, also, children, younger children and teenagers have different ways to manage their state and to feel better. Younger children prefer to do active games, practice sports, go out, make new friends, and so on. Teenagers like, like events that allow them to express themselves, share their experience, emotions, and be themselves. But for children, for younger children and adolescents, it's equally important to communicate with their peers to have their friends because simple conversation about your favorite book or movie may feel make f children feel better therefore they're really emphasizing the importance with, of being with friends also children seek support and they mostly turn to their relatives to their friends because they feel safe around their, around them they feel at home and there is a quote from the 40-year-old female refugee in Georgia. And she says, when I'm at home, surrounded by my relatives, I don't mean an apartment, but home is a place where you feel comfortable, when you are loved, and you are appreciated and respected. Also, children emphasizing that they want to be supported and heard in school. They seek support through their classmates and teachers as well. And it's really good to note that children understand the importance of psychological mm, s mental support and mental state. So they attend in psychological meetings or events implemented by safe spaces, child-friendly spaces, and they talking about their feelings, about their experiences and feel well after that. And now we're moving to the part about children's participation and accountability for children. Um, there was 
an incredible event uh, organized by teenagers and children. And I want you to name probably what you can see on these photos. Like, what do you observe? What is like the, your favorite photo on this slide? Yeah, right, children are playing. Um, there was a feast of festivals organized by adults, but with help of teenagers. There were a meeting with adults and children when adults encouraged teenagers for their suggestions, uh, ideas, and their opinion were taken into consideration. And as you've managed, uh, mentioned, uh, those children proposed to let do active games because I think it will be interesting for my friends and peers. And they helped with their organization, like is two teenage teens. Next photo is a crafting activity. These girls are really, really like crafting and art. So she was a mentor on the crafting and art activity. Uh, there is also crafting and art activity. And there were boys and girls who liked dancing and they organized dance battle, as you can see. Also, some teenagers understand that it may be uninteresting for their peers to attend all these childhood things, so they proposed to do lemonades. As you can see, there is teenagers doing lemonades by themselves. And also there is uh, activities for younger children because teenager was like, okay, we have teens, but we also have uh, younger children. We need to do something with them. Okay, let me, let me have all this stuff. So children were like uh, active organizers and mentors. Also in World Vision programming, children with disabilities were presented. Organizers invited them um, to attend inclusive events and other children and teams supported them. And some adolescents even wanted to organize those activities. They helped them to attend uh, crafting activities or do arts or be active and do active games, practice sports, etc. So these children with disabilities were presented and supported by other children. And um, my favorite part, <laughs> because World Vision program implemented by their partners were really focused on children's opinion. They take in, they've taken their opinions into consideration and implemented those various activities to the program. For example, I asked for a speaking club and they implemented it um, with a native speaker. So it was really useful for me. Other children like outdoor activities and they were presented. We went for a excursions to museums, not, in only, not only in our child-friendly space, all, all around Ukraine or in neighborhood countries. Also, children like to do crafts or arts, and there were crafting and arts lessons or scientific lessons even. Also, there was a computer lessons for children who like this area. And also there were meetings with the different professions, professionalists, and children may understand about their future profession and how they want to, what they want to do in future. And also, really important topic, it's sex education. There were sex education lectures for teenagers, and it was really important and necessary in our society. And teens liked that, and say that it was really important and interesting for them. And also after these programs in child-friendly spaces, teens and children became more confident, stronger, they improved their skills, and therefore some teens became uh, volunteers in different charity foundations or humanitarian organizations. And now they're taking a big part really serious part in organizing and planning such activities. And I think it's really cool because children should be heard because our lived experience and our skills are 
matter. Like they are really matters for adults and for our country at all. Oh, and now I want you sh to see drawings. Like it's a, it's it's a feedback from children in neighborhood countries. It's Ukrainians Ukrainian drawings. I will translate for you. And the first drawing with the heart, a child really thankful for love, support, mm, responsibility, and care. Also on the second one, it's right written, I like, and everything is circled. Like, I like everything. Um, on this picture with the girl, ch child says, thank you, in your, in your space, I have my childhood back. Also, you can see other feedback, and I want to know the, uh, the last one. It's my favorite. It's the funniest one because it's written in Russian to Moldovians to understand because they speak both Romanian and Russians. It's written in, in Russian, but with Ukrainian letters. It's like, as you can see, it's I, E, with a and um, I think it's really cute because child was really excited and wanted really much to say thank you for toys, puzzles, and so on. So language barrier didn't stop him. And last video for, to for today. Uh, it's about refugee in Moldova. She'll share her experience of attending um, child-friendly space and what she liked it the most and how and how she was how her experience and opinion was taken into consideration in this child friendly space. Что ж, ты готова? Да. Давай. Скажи, пожалуйста, как давно вы находитесь в Молдове? Где-то 8. Да, ты помнишь, когда вы приехали? Ну, приехали где-то августа потом где-то через несколько месяцев приехали работали угу. а как часто ты приходишь в наш центр ну когда есть возможность то тогда прихожу ну максимум я не прихожу когда я заболела там всегда какая-то прям заразная болезнь там и температура если Mm -hmm. то тогда я не прихожу. А так мне тут очень нравится. Я тут как бы примерно же возможности, я сюда приду. И как бы сколько часто сюда не приходила моя мама, то я всегда должна быть тут. Вот сегодня я пришла в Савату, потому что я уже как бы пришла. Mm -hmm. Потому что я должна прийти Спасибо. сюда в А как часто? Сколько раз в неделю примерно? Спасибо. Что ты чувствуешь, когда находишься здесь? Ну, как сказать? Хорошо себя чувствую. Хорошо себя чувствую. Как ты проводишь время? Чем занимаешься тут? Если пришли. Угу. А у тебя есть уже друзья тут? Ага. Да? да? Подружились? Подружились. Класс. Э, хорошо. Скажи, пожалуйста, какую помощь получаете вы во время, получали во время прибытия тут, в стране, в Молдове? Э, помощь. Ну, пакеты помощи, там, пакеты помощи были, какие-то там, 
средства, типа там мыло, шампунь, вот эти вот все, uh -huh. точки дрючки, там, и там еще ваучеры получали. Вот на ваучеры мы все вместе шли и решали, как потратить их. Uh -huh. А когда нам давали ваучер на четырех членов семьи, у меня там были два ваучера, один на Илос, один на Афину. Uh -huh. на Афину, 600 лет всего на Афину, и, я, это, и три страна Илосы. Я на Илос себе купила там какие-то маечку. Uh -huh. uh -huh. А э, в Афине я потратила на продукты и посетить. Uh -huh. Тебе понравилось? Да. Uh -huh. Хорошо. Что-то еще помнишь? Из отеля? Ну, не обязательно. Там из помощи. В общем, там только приехали, там были палаки, там, и после фривария как бы спросить за пакеты помощи. Ну, там да, угу. договорились, и ну, нам э, иногда давали пакеты помощи. Хорошо. Можешь поделиться своими мыслями о полезности полученной помощи? Полезна она? Как ты думаешь? Ну да. Угу. Можешь описать свои чувства? <связывая> да, вот как ты себя чувствуешь, когда получаешь что-то. <связывая> ну, как себя чувствую? Приятно себя чувствую. Угу. И как бы потом, если это что-то, что, например, можно взять, потом что-то потратить, это, например, там ваучеры и так далее, mm -hmm. то я думаю, что какой можно себе сложить список, чтобы он был и для всей семьи, и для меня отдельно. Ну, потому что обычно, когда ваучеры дают где-то 200-300 лет, сумма была большая. Mm -hmm. эм, ну, в общем, я получаю еще, ну, Удовольствие получаю от этого. Угу. Спасибо огромное. Это были все вопросы. Спасибо тебе, что поделилась своими мыслями. Хочешь что-то сказать еще? Хочу сказать, что спасибо за просмотр. Молодец. Пока. So, did you like this video? I think this girl really funny because she's like a bit bored and she was like. But she's still answering because she's excited. <laughs> and now it's all that I wanted to share with you. And now I'm proposing you to have a teamwork. You are already in small groups, uh, depends on language. And maybe you can try to um, think over about questions that you have, or maybe you want to share some experience or thoughts about this session or reflections. Just if you want, like, I will, you're welcome to sharing. I'm really pleasant to hear something from you. So I will give you five minutes and then we will return and discuss it together. So maybe we can come back in plenary now, if you finish your discussions. So yeah, like we are here to answer any possible questions or comments, reflections. I know we, the session was about Ukraine and so there might be people from different regions that had differences in what they're experiencing or what the children in other contexts in the world are experiencing or some similarities. So we're really here to welcome any uh, comments, reflections, so please feel free. I think, yeah, we still have quite some time to do that, so go ahead. If it's for Victoria or for me, we're here. So, yeah, Man Manami, will you help with the microphone? Okay. If anyone wants to break the ice with the first, perfect, thank you. Hello? See. No, thank you so much. We, were, we are so happy here. We are from Latin America. And we are so happy hearing you and, well, and congratulate you for your magnificent presentation. Oh, that was, thank you. That was amazing. That was what we were hoping to see and having this experience from, from you is it's, it's meaningful for us. And thank you for that. Thank and you so much for your review. No, come on. It's, 
it's no, it's just to say thank you for for that and for sharing uh, your experience and also the, the experience of the of the kids of the children of, from Ukraine and it, it's good to feel that uh, organizations such as uh, World Vision are doing a, an amazing job there. And we were we were we were talking a lot of, a lot of things and we were. Uh, thinking that maybe you can share uh, a message for the adolescents uh, who we work with in Latin America. You know, some of them are suffering now um, different things. Uh, they, we have um, organized crime uh, here in, the, in, in a region. We have people displaced uh, going from one country to another. And sometimes for them, it's good to hear that they are not alone. And maybe if you can share a message that we can share with them, that would be great. Yeah, sure. Thank you for your for your initiative, like for inviting me to do that. Honestly, I want to say that you are not alone. You are really not alone. All children have their parents. Not all, but they have like a community they want they may ask someone they may share their experience there is so many of us who are helping children like we have a really good hopes that children may receive their help or humanitarian aid so you're not alone and if you want you may speak out you may share your experience you can do your best if you want. If you, you don't want to do that, you may just receive all help and support and be happy. You may be happy. It's our task to do that. that. We, we all here work for this. I am do my little best. I'm volunteering for Charity Foundation. I'm helping children. But you are doing really huge work for children, especially in Latin America. And... You're not alone. Remember that. You may ask someone for help. Thank you. Hello, Victoria. Hi. Hi Eddie. Hello. Um, I want to um, invite you to share your best memories for your hometown. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's really like Really sweet, thank you. Honestly, I don't remember really much about Donetsk because I was only six years old when we lived. Uh, but I remember about really big Donetsk stadium. We used to go there for football matches. And I was like really little and I don't remember like who we were waiting for. And I was like, oh, this is go. And my relative was like, it's our goal. Like it's to us. And I was like, oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> but I have more memories about Bakhmut because I lived there from the, my first grade. I went to school there. I have new many friends from Bakhmut. And um, maybe there was also big stadium. And once I get lost there, <laughs> it's not that really big memory, but uh, that's for. Um, probably I... When we were in Prague during our trip to here, uh, we heard like this famous um, clock uh, in the center of Prague, and every o'clock it's do like um, music or bell, and then we can count like how many hours they, there is, and it reminds me Bahmut because in Bahmut we have also clock but not that cool. cool. Yeah, we just have more than clock on the culture house, house. Oh, sorry, we don't have, we had in back. And um, it also have like a music every o'clock and then it's, we can count what time is it. And uh, my mom always like, okay, when, you, when we go for, uh, to job, oh no, it's really fast. Like, no, we are on time. It's okay. But then when, when they leave in their job, oh, go, bye-bye. It's like, no, no, it's not that quick. It's all right. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, I like my home in Bakhmut. It's really like 
not really modern um, apartment, but it's really comfortable. And I have my book there, head, sorry, because probably it's burned. Um, book, my book there, my hobbies, and I want to return, but I don't, don't have where to return, unfortunately. Many other questions? Hi. Uh, Hi. I want to thank you for a wonderful presentation. Part part of what made it so great was the diverse examples you gave of activities or just spaces that help uh, teenagers, children uh, process big emotions. I'm wondering if, um, if you could tell me from your experience, uh, having a culture like this where so many people are maybe experiencing similar things and challenges, uh, what in your perspective makes it easier or more difficult to talk about mental health? Um, yeah, uh, I think every child, every adult have their own experience. Some of adults or even children witnessing more scary things, like for example, some adults witness death of their of their own children, or some children witness um, dead deadness of their parents or relatives, and some children are really shy and they probably they were really outgoing and sociable before war, before witnessing all these scary things, but now they're really shy and anxious. Uh, I used to speak with the girl from Mariupol. It was really, it's destroyed. Mariupol is destroyed now, as you know, probably. And she was like really, really shy. She communicated only through mobile phone with her friends. And she was really like, really shy. She didn't talk about her feelings, her experience. We just know she's from Mariupol. And that's all. And for her, it's really hard to speak. For example, there is me. <laughs> I'm really sociable. I want to speak about everything, about my school, about my experience of displacement, and I will laugh. But it's really painful. I feel really painful inside. And most of my friends are like the, like the same. They want to share it. They can laugh or do jokes, but it's still painful. I have a friend for, uh, from Donetsk region. She also participated uh, in virtual meeting last year. Her name is Bogdana. Hello, Bogdana. <laughs> and um, she is really, really outgoing. She do really good jokes. She has a really good sense of humor. And she always speak about like her experience in her town when she was under attacks. And it's always with jokes, like we always laughing, we always, ha oh, it was really funny. Yeah, we were, she was like afraid of attacks and she need to stay behind two walls if you don't want to run to the shelter. And she heard like really boom, really loud boom. And she was like, ah, she was half without clothes, half without their shoes. And she was like, what is it? And her mom was like, nothing weapon <laughs> and it's really funny like she, her way to talking it, about it it's really funny but it's really scared like her experience really scared and some people some children can share it in this way but some children will share it and will cry and it depends on uh, every child and every adult as well thank you so thanks, thanks a lot. That was a very, very good uh, discussion. And uh, I mean, we, we had many, many points, but I'm going to pick mine. <laughs> uh, now, I, I was thinking, you know, uh, we keep also talking about, and you were uh, talking about the importance of uh, the uh, feeling at home and feeling, uh, you know, uh, in, a, in the support that you're getting from your parents. Um, because we heard during the presentation more the uh, action we're doing for for uh, for the children, but can you reflect a bit on uh, the support to receive or not from your parents, and what was the most important? Because I mean, you you're a teenager, 
So I think that also come at a certain moment of your life where you need to kind of find your space with your parents and they're getting all that stress. And I mean, if you've got a few things that you want to, to share on that, because sometimes we wonder, or oh, can we also support the caregivers to support their children, you know? Thank you for the question. Um, I'm really thankful for my, for my, my parents for support and really saying, thankful for them that they cared care about me and they removed me from the war on time like i wasn't witnessing so much attacks yeah it was experience i have experience of witnessing but not that much as my friends do um i think if i will share only my experience i will do i will say only good things like my parents are supportive they share with me their plans, most of their plans. How I, like, we will go there, we will do that. Maybe you have um, thoughts about that. But if I will talk about my friends' parents, sometimes they are not supportive. Like, they're really angry because of the displacement, um, of because of new environment. They may be strict. They may, may not ask children for their opinion. They they're really strict and bad parents, if you may say like that. And I think it's not supposed to be like that. Children may be, should be supported and taken into consideration. Like parents should think about, okay, we will move there if there are like school or maybe other activities or something, like care about children. But I know sometimes when people running away from war, they don't think about it. They just want to run away. They want just to escape. And it's also good, like, it's right, it's matters to do it on the right time. And I want every parents to know that children really want to be heard and respected. They want to know that they have some, have someone behind them to support and accept. And just if I may add, so at the very beginning, yes, like the focus was really on children. So providing the child friendly spaces, those activities targeting children. But then, yeah, like World Vision, but other organization and implementing partners understood that you cannot just work with the children. You also have to work with the caregivers, with the parents and the family as a whole. So in many of these child friendly spaces, for example, there are sessions on positive parenting. We have also like counseling. So the psychologist the support is also there both for children and for parents. And there are really sessions that are like the spaces are organized in a way that when the parents bring their children to the safe space, then the children are engaged in some activities. And in the meantime, also uh, parents have have their own uh, separate activities and we have seen how for example our therapy is working very well with adults and it had some uh, results have been very surprising especially seeing fathers uh, being engaged in our therapy because we also have to consider how like the masculinity that it's now in Ukraine, you know, when you have all advertisement about joining the army, the strong man, and so on and so forth, and it's a patriarchal society. So really seeing fathers that come to the center and are engaged uh, in this way uh, really makes us understand how, yeah, like we do need this integrated approach, so working both with the children and their families to recreate this connection. And, and so, yeah, we are really working on this and um, exploring more this programming with, you know, intergenerational dialogues and activities uh, targeting especially teenagers and their caregivers. So, yeah, we are really now working more into this. Okay, maybe one last. And then we have the surprise. Yes, Renier, please. <laughs> Sorry, we already started chatting and I want to continue. Um, why you decide to be a diplomatic? And based on that, what exactly time you decide, decide to be a diplomatic person? Um, and as a kid, already diplomatic kid, what kind of devices you want to give for us 
we are child protection practitioners in different countries, in different regions, from different organizations. What kind of devices we should have to take in place in order to address children's rights and your perspective or point of view? Thank you for question. It's really good. Thank you so much. Um, honestly, I decided to be a diplomat for, I think, I think year ago or a year and a half when I attended virtual meeting because I saw like, okay, I like sharing my experience. I like to talk a lot and I'm not bad in English. Okay. And I had experienced all this like uh, meeting, all this preparation, this communi communication with um, uh, different organizations. And my parents and I we were like, okay, I like speaking, I like English. Translator, not that good, like you need to hear and then speak, but you, Wika, want to share your own thoughts, okay. Let it be, what do you think about international relations? Yeah, like I felt it, like it's mine. I, it, I was never thinking about it, I felt it, like, yeah, it's mine. Um, and if you want to hear my advices, um, I'm only 15 years old, almost 16, but I have an experience, small. Um, as we've mentioned in uh, our presentation, that accountability of children is really matters because children have their experiences, they have their thoughts. Children know the best what is uh, matters and important and necessary for them and their peers because they are children. They know the best. Like I like to learn English, and my teens were like more or less the same thing thought with, with me. So accountability to children is really matters. Let's hear, hear children's voices. Let's do like a, mm, these small groups of children in uh, government uh, places to just hear their opinion about new uh, things, new events, new laws, like especially laws about children, like about education because we are studying not adults we receiving all this stuff we go to school and feel unheard and feel all these disadvantages of education so my main like message is accountability to children let's hear children's voices thank you thank you so much and now we, as I mentioned, we have a surprise for you. Uh, Eleonora, may you help me? Uh, I have a Ukrainian flag, as you know, it's blue and yellow. Uh, maybe you can remind me what it represents. Yeah, it's blue sky and yellow bit. And I want you to, be, to join activity of sign it. Maybe you can write something from you for children in Ukraine, and I will have it and uh, carry for our child-friendly space. And I will show it for my friends, my colleagues, uh, or other friends, other teens or children. I think it's really good that you, if you will uh, write something in even your language with translation to English, please. <laughs> Because not every children speaks even English, so I may like translate to them. Or maybe you may just write where are you from, or your thoughts, like your wishes, your feelings, just what you want. And you have markers on your tables, and you may move to this, uh, to the cardboard, and uh, do it if you want. I would like to inspire you. Thank you so much for your support. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. We can. You may leave it here or even back uh, um, downstairs, and you may sign it today, tomorrow, and day after tomorrow. Like we will keep it for you to sign and write all you what you want.
And yeah, thank you all. I'm just here to wrap up. <laughs> and yeah, like Victoria was amazing. So I was just here to support. And yeah, um, th thank you so much for your attention and for this last contribution. Um, and yeah, like our intention was really to present what displaced children are facing in Ukraine and also in neighboring countries. And I hope that, yeah, this... Um, these messages, their experience will stay with you, will make you reflect. And as well, yeah, like as we are going through this three days, we will also come up with some other messages and we will contribute to the closing remarks. So I think, yeah, you kind of um, come ahead <laughs> of time, but uh, it's, it's great that uh, we... We are already thinking about that, and uh, yeah, we, we do hope that these experiences are not just going to remain in this room, but will help you also in your programming and in your reflections in the future. So thank you so much, and yeah, thank you for the contribution in the flag. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.